This is an oral history interview with Yvonne Lobby, maiden name Booth, which aims to recall the subcultures to which she belonged to back in high school and her experiences at a dance club uh, called Images. Images was located in Brewster, New York, just west of the Connecticut, New York border, was active roughly during the late 80s, early 90s, and featured DJs from the local Western Connecticut State University radio station WXCI. It was a dry club, no alcohol was served, and it attracted what I will roughly call alternative teens who were growing up in many local towns in the states of New York and Connecticut. These teens were part of what could be called goth, post-punk, hardcore, and other subculture and counterculture scenes. My name is Samantha Levin, and this interview is taking place on July 1st, 2022, over a video call. While I'm the interviewer here and generally intend to let our interviewee speak about their uh, particular experiences, I was also part of the same community and may reminisce here and there. So welcome, Yvonne. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm really excited. Thank um, you for having me. Yay. Um, the first question is pretty basic. Could you talk about where you were born and where you grew up? So I was born in 73 in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I grew up in Newtown, Connecticut, and uh, graduated in class of 1992. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And as a teenager, what led you to take an interest in these local subcultures? Was it the local radio stations, siblings, friends, um, something else? And, and around what year did this start to happen? I'm... I'm uncertain as to when, there's no specific date, I should say. I think it probably stemmed from um, probably around age 15. I had a boyfriend who at the time was very influential, my first love. Um, and he introduced me to all sorts of music and um, not necessarily a scene, but definitely music. Music definitely um, drove my interests into a more alternative fashion mm -hmm. um not just the way I dressed or anything like that but mindset um I think it helped me realize that I was unique amongst all the other you know at the time preppy jock popular kids I kind of just knew that I was always going to be different right 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 yeah so the music was great it definitely felt like um it encapsulated that feeling those emotions and how would you describe that difference? Like besides, like you mentioned what I'll call clicks, the preppy, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. um, jocks and that kind of thing. So what was different about you? Yeah, it's funny in hindsight, I, I hate even using those terms, right. but, <laughs> but um, then I felt, um, you know, everybody in their teenage years, you're, you're so not self-absorbed, but you know, you're going through all these emotions and you're growing and learning and you're trying to find your independence. And I think my, um, I've always been artistic. I, I went to college for art. I lived in the art room. I had a great art teacher at the high school. Um, not, that was not, you know, like a popular route to go. I think I was unique in that way. Um, I was also unique in the music I listened to because, you know, not everybody was listening to it. It's definitely not what was on the popular radio stations. You couldn't even find it anywhere but XCI, you know? Right, right. Um, and, you know, I think then I started getting, cause I was artistic. I started getting creative with my clothes and, you know, it just sets you out from apart from the majority of people that were in the high school. Right. Right. And it, it's not to um, make light of, or, you know, say that my, you know, my issues growing up are any different from anybody else's. It's just, I express them differently. So, cause I know a lot of people who went, you know, now that we're so many years past have come to me and said, you know, my life was really bad in high school and I had no idea. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you describe some of that music or names of the bands? Oh or man. A um, lot. I know. <laughs> yeah. Started out definitely the cure, uh, the Smiths, Bauhaus, um, Camper Van Beethoven, um, Love and Rockets. My first concert ever was a uh, New Order, Sugar Cube, and PIL, I think, mm -hmm. at uh, Lake Compounds in Connecticut. Um, so that was pretty amazing. Uh, 
So yeah, the, my first boyfriend definitely had a big influence on my music. He introduced me to a lot of different music. And of course it was all records and cassettes back then. So, um, you know, it was whatever we could get our hands on. And then I don't know how I learned of images. Um, but once I started going to the clubs and hang, meeting new people, you know, the whole music palette just expanded, and, you know, infinitesimally. It was really, um, as you, yeah, Jeff McKay, the DJ there introduced me to a lot of new music. Mm -hmm. um, and then you develop style, you know, you kind of fall into your, whatever you're listening to at the, at the moment over the years, so. Um, do you mind, uh, so that ex-boyfriend didn't introduce you to images, it was something else totally. No, and I, I have been thinking about it and I really can't remember the first time I went or who I went with. I definitely didn't go alone because I, you know, that was not my, style um right. once I got comfortable with the place you know I went alone because I would knew I would meet up with people but right 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 um but I do remember going and it being dark and clove smelling and smoky <laughs> and you know uh loud music and a lot of people like lingering in the shadows along the you know the outskirts wallflowers yeah so yeah. um but it was a cool vibe and um to find a place that really felt like, you know, it was, it was for me, uh, that was nice. It was really a great outlet for everything, you know, social and emotional. Cause I love to dance. Right. And I was always jealous of the people who could dance better, you know? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so I always, I'm still like not a very good dancer to this day. <laughs> not that I put it to the test anytime recently. So <laughs> less opportunities to do so, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think the last time I really danced was at, um, John Bachman's wedding with, when he married Megan Bachman and Jeff McKay was the DJ. So, okay. right, right. right. <laughs> and is, is Bachman spelled B-A-C-H-M-A-N? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, J-O-N he usually goes by. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. And he's from Southbury, but unfortunately I've lost touch with him when he moved to Oregon. I, I kind of, he disappeared. Right, right, so, right. I'd love to talk to him again. Yeah, I'd love to reach out to him um, and Megan too, actually. Um, can you tell me about, you mentioned your clothing changed. Can you describe mm -hmm. that a little bit? Oh, definitely black. Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of black. Um, but I did do, you know, like I was wearing uh, tights under everything, shorts, you know, I was wearing a lot of skirts. Um, I liked thrift stores. So I was shopping at Sal's and Danbury and, you know, looking for funky, cool stuff. Of course the mall too, because the mall was, you know, back in that age, the mall was a big deal. And, you know, you'd go get your clothes for the next Friday night or whatever. Right, right, right. Um, and that's Danbury Fair Mall, right? Danbury Fair Mall. Yeah. You could actually smoke in Danbury Fair Mall. I remember because oh, we got, <laughs> yeah, we got in trouble. We were smoking cloves in the mall and somebody reported us saying that we were, I don't even know who we were with, but they said they were smoking pot and, you know, they came over and we're like, no, it's just cloves. And they're like, okay. <laughs> <Can't do anything laughs> right. so, yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as far as I would do, I would dye my hair black, purple. Yeah. I didn't go crazy light colors. I always tend to go dark. So blue, um, experimenting with makeup. I used to draw little spider webs around the corners of my eyes and mm -hmm. Lord knows where I had the time to do that. I must've had to get up at midnight to go get ready for school <laughs> by the time I got all the layers. <laughs> and then, you know, like I, you get creative, you do fishnet, uh, stockings, but you rip the crotch open and you cut the feet off. So you had sleeves and, oh, oh, it was fun. <laughs> a lot of velvet, you know, so. Right, right, right. And what thrift stores were you going to? Where were they? Oh, it was definitely Salvation Army in Danbury. That was pretty okay. much the big one. Um, and it's still there and I still go there and it, you know, it's changed a little bit, but it's still awesome. Right, right, right. Um, the, you know, and there was like a little organization there was one in Newtown where I grew up, uh, down in Sandy Hook that I would go to mm -hmm. when I was a kid and, you know, just yeah. different places. Yeah. No, so nothing as big as Salvation Army. So, and how and going you... down to the city too, like, oh my yeah. gosh, yeah, Bleecker yeah. Street and even, you know, Canal. Uh, oh gosh. Um, I can't remember. It's on Broadway, right? Broadway. Yeah. Um, Jack's no something Jack's it'll come to me. There yeah. was a bunch of stores. 
Yeah, big ones too, mm-hmm. I recall. Mm-hmm. Um, and how did you get your hair dyed? Like I, I could. Oh, I did it myself. Out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Henna, henna ended up turning out to be my best friend. So, you okay. know, you go to Sally Beauty and you get your packets of henna and, you know, everything would be like henna for all around your face and fingers for days. But right, right, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I didn't start bleaching really until like college, you know, bleaching my hair out first and then doing colors or whatever, right. or almost, you know, doing the Sinead O'Connor thing and buzzing it all off. Right, 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 right. I know some people were going into the city to go to uh, Astor Place to get their hair, whatever, to punked up, mohawk, Mm -hmm. whatever. Um, And I don't remember who was doing that. So, Uh, but you were doing it at home. That's great. Right. Yeah. I got, I got my glitter Doc Martens in Astor Place somewhere. Oh, nice. One of those stores. (laughs) I can't remember the name of it. And, um, got my first piercing outside of my ears at the gauntlet in New York city down there too. So, <laughs> don't have that anymore. It was a nuisance, but yeah. Right, right, right. Um, so what would you call what we had? Was it a subculture counterculture a, a random mix of, of freaks? What would you call us if like, sorry to put a label on it to try to, to force you to put a label on it, but did we have a word back? I then? feel like the word that I remember the most would be new wave or goth. Um, I didn't necessarily consider myself a punk. Um, yeah, goth, new wave, mostly. I did get into punk music later, but it wasn't, um, you know, I didn't cross over. It was right. more just a listening, pers- you know, style, right. stuff of music that I listened to. Right, right, right. Um, just going through my questions. Are there any moments from that time that you can share from going to the club that you remember? Gosh, you know, images, images is really a blur, but like, I do remember, you know, um, seeing her tears play there. I do remember that. Um, I don't know if I remember any other bands playing. Um, but I met a lot of people through there or you know inadvertently um people who knew people who knew people so then you start hanging out with people outside of images because a lot of this images was a little bit more of a a central location that i ended up meeting lots of people from so like it wasn't that i was going to images every weekend Mm -hmm. um, at that time because it was kind of new to me but Mm -hmm. as um as the place started to close there was a I don't even know the timeline. Was it polos and then the boardwalk or boardwalk then polo? I was in college at that time. Uh, I went to college in 1990. So at some point in the following year or two years, suddenly there was boardwalk and images was gone. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know, but I will, yeah. I will soon find out. Right. <laughs> I definitely, I have a more, like I can recall more from boardwalk. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was a bigger space. It had the upstairs. There was more places to just kind of sit and chill out which was nice Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but and I actually had a birthday party upstairs once nice and I can't remember the birthday either that's terrible (laughs) but but I remember like I had a whole slew of friends um some were you know like totally into the beastie boys and quicksand and things like that so you know they were skaters and whatnot so they loved it because I could just play Mm -hmm. I had them play whatever I wanted to play so right 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 right. did it did that catering to everybody yeah. <laughs> did, did that time impact? How did that time impact your life? You've talked about that a little bit, but how did it guide you? I made some, I made some really good friends. I feel like it, that was, you know, it's like most people's teenage years, it was seminal. It, um, you know, you have, I have fond memories of just driving around Connecticut with the windows down in the summer and listen, you know, listening to music and not having any plans that, you know, there's there's a there is a time I do miss it I wish you know I wasn't an adult anymore but uh with responsibilities <laughs> but you know you do make some you go on some crazy adventures you make some really great friends you have lots of good memories um and I did meet a lot of people and and um some I've stayed in touch with over the years and some you know you life happens and you lose touch and you know Facebook has been great that's how we met yeah um 
yeah, it's just, it's, you, you know, you catch up and you see people and you see where they're at and it's, it's humbling because you realize like, oh, you know what, we're all the same ultimately in that regard, you know, life happens and things change, but deep down, I think we're all still a little alternative or a new age. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't just a phase. Yeah. 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 No, my music, I still <laughs> listen to a lot of, you know, mm-hmm. early eighties, nineties music, um, amongst other things, of course, but yeah, right, right, right. My playlists tend to vary. Don't listen. I was a big Sisters of Mercy fan. And that's the one band that I never got to see in concert that I always like kicked myself. Um, but I never, you know, it's funny. I don't listen to them half as much as I used to. Right. So, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Things pass. You know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It ebbs and flows. So, yeah. yeah. Um, did you, oh, did you go to the, um, there were a couple of reunions that we had quite a while ago now. Did you go to the, okay. I wasn't aware of those. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. That was a MySpace connection thing. Ah, uh, yeah. I think. Um, happened a long time ago now, um, close to 20 years ago. That's weird. Um, so, okay. So you, I think when we, when we met um, a week ago ish, mm-hmm. talked about going to um, Liz and Steve's house for mm-hmm. certain gatherings. Can you describe that a little bit? Sure. It, you know what? I met Liz and Steve way past images and the boardwalk and polo. Mm-hmm. Um, again, this is kind of how the small world thing works. So one of my best friends right. in high school, uh, Lawson Burke, um, you know, he was hanging out with a different set of people. He wasn't necessarily, I don't think he ever went to images, but he would go to the boardwalk occasionally. Right. And, um, I don't know how he met his friends, but they were also friends with Liz. So he ended up spending time at Liz's. And then, right. um, I believe that's how I was introduced to Liz. Although, you know, we were definitely crossing paths a lot in that right. same group of friends. Um, and yeah, I used to love going over to their house, this big Victorian, and you know tall ceilings and like she always had it like it was the place to hang out like everybody was welcome um you know she had comfy furniture and you know and even (laughs) so to the point where like people would pitch in and like you know I remember scraping windows the paint off of windows for her you know and like getting everything ready to repaint and stuff and um and then later much later uh after I had moved south and then after I came back um she and I dated for a little bit and like she threw a really great big birthday party for me it was a Halloween party so everybody had to be in costume and stuff (laughs) it was fun it was awesome awesome. that's awesome yeah Yeah. and we're in touch on Facebook now and you know we're both creative people so um, yeah it's pretty cool to see you know and see how she's doing and vice versa yeah um and it's Steve Nelson and I'm blanking on her last name Davis Davis, thank you. I knew that, and it totally, go, it totally jumped out of my head. And then the, and the person you mentioned who um, introduced them to you, your best friend from then, Lawson Burke, but he has since passed, unfortunately. Okay. Like, very heartbreaking. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Can I ask you to spell his, his name? Uh, L A W S O N, and the last name is B U R K E. Okay. Thank you. And he's from Newtown. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, Sorry to hear that. Yeah, um, no, it was tough. So yeah. I still miss him. I'm really? in touch with his family though. That's good. On my Christmas card list. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, so we touched upon why you stopped going, but you like a lot of us stopped going when the boardwalk became a thing. Um, mm-hmm. There's been mention of the leech mob that um, turns that people sounds away. familiar from the from from the boardwalk um Mm -hmm. and it's interesting that that you've not heard about them they made other people not want to go anymore and then of course the boardwalk closed whenever Mm -hmm. they closed is that what when you stopped going or i don't think it was definitive like that um i feel like uh it, it was just another step in life right the path of life like so uh, I went off to college in, in Boston and, you know, I would come home occasionally on weekends and stuff and, you know, I catch up with friends, but um, like most things, when you start going away from home, you meet new people and you develop a new life and, you know, like yeah. habits and whatever. So it is um, for me, it was tough because I did 
lose a lot of connections with people. And, you know, this is before the internet. So everything was a lot harder yeah. um, to, to stay in touch with people. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think that was really kind of, um, you know, once you learn that the boardwalk isn't cool anymore or something, if I went home and that's just not what we were doing, we were going over people's houses and just hanging out or partying, yeah. then yeah. that was what replaced that. Right, right, right. And, and where are you now? I'm in Poughkeepsie, New York, which is not too far from, it's an hour, 15 minutes from Newtown. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, I don't even know if there is a scene here. I feel like if there were a scene, they would have gone to images back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because <I> <laughs> um, it's about equidistant. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But there was a scene. So I lived in the South for a while and I lived in Houston and uh, New Orleans. And so, you know, New Orleans has a huge goth population. And then um, Houston also had a pretty good, they had a nightclub called Numbers and I would still go to that. And uh, lots of, you know, very much similar vibe, a lot of fun, great, great place to hang out. So, yeah, except yeah. for they served alcohol. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and did you go to any, any of the clubs in Manhattan when you were in high school? Yeah, the limelight. Okay. I have good memories of that because like um, I would catch the train from Brewster down to the city, you know, in the evening, go to the limelight, stay until two or three in the morning, you know, whatever that last train was that you could take. I can't remember if it rode, I think it went 24 hours back then. Now it's like, it stops at two or three in the morning. Right. Um, but then I would literally go, go back to school the next morning, straight right. off the train. <laughs> Oh, to have that energy again would be amazing. But right. the limelight was awesome. I loved the limelight. Um, and was that Tuesday night's communion or other nights as well? I can't remember. I can't right. remember. But I feel like there was occasions where it felt like it's just like a normal club night. And then there were occasions where, um, geez, I think we were supposed to see Peter Murphy there one time. Oh, and then it, wow. we got there and it was canceled. Okay. Um, and then one time I met um, 120 Minutes uh, DJ or VJ. Right. Um, gosh, what is his name? Dave. Do you remember? No. It'll come to me, but he was there at the bar. Was that? You can Google it. Yeah, yeah, Google <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, he was at the bar, so I got to meet him. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, my friends would take, there's some place in Westchester that I can't even remember where or what the name of it was, but we used to go there too and okay, uh, go dancing and stuff. So was it Krypton's Haven Ivy? Ivy. Okay. Yeah, Ivy. That was all the same place. It kept changing names. Yeah. Haven and Ivy sound familiar. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, funny. If they were driving, I had no clue. <laughs> right. Exactly. Just into so. the woods. Here we go. It's a club. Right. A bar right. in the middle of the woods. It's nowhere, yeah. <laughs> I love those though. That was fun. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then all the concerts, you know, you go to all yeah. the concerts. Went to the first Lollapalooza in New Jersey. Right. Oh, that was awesome. You know, right, right, very right. out of body type of experience. You know, it was like dry and hot and dusty. And then all of a sudden the rain came in and it was, yeah, it was just amazing. So. <laughs> And that had, um, the first Lollapalooza was run by Perry Farrell. Why do I remember his name and not the band? Jane's Addiction. Jane's Addiction. Thank you. That was yeah. pew, out of my head. It was a good lineup. It was, um, yeah, Jane's Addiction. It had uh, Ice Tea, of all people. It had yeah. Living Color. It had, um, Susie was supposed to be there, but she uh, was had like throat problems at that time oh. um nine inch nails who yes. again another one that i love and still love um who else i'm sure there was a bunch of people and i just can't remember uh, right yeah it was a big lineup mm -hmm. i saw the second one which had a lot of it had pearl jam and mm -hmm. kind of like delving into the grunge mm -hmm. stuff that was going on um a lot of the same performers Right. Nirvana, I'm sure. Oh, well, I don't know if Nirvana don't ever so. played, but that was that era. Yeah. That time. yeah it, was, it was that era. I think they blew up shortly um, after, like in the, in like the next year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm blanking on all the performers. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but the concerts uh, were great. You know, yeah. I definitely, um, 
went to a lot of concerts. Yeah. So. Yeah. And some I, I remember and some I don't. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, they come around and they're like, oh, you went to that. I'm like, I did. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I conflate them all. So like, I remember yes. seeing people jumping around. I think I saw ministry. I think ministry was at Lollapalooza as well. Oh yeah. I never did see ministry. I don't think. Um, skinny puppy. No. Got the new Ritz. A couple of other things. Yeah. I saw a white zombie in Westchester somewhere and um, Guar down in the city. Nice. Um, yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> cool. And then there was a weird thing too, like happening in the, towards the end of all of that, um, like raves were kind of starting to happen. And yeah. uh, I don't know if you remember, did you do the Casper rave out at no. like rock, Rocky Hill? amusement park i always thought it was crazy that they had an amusement park that was willing to do a rave um at night and right, you know they right. kept the rides and stuff going. <laughs> whoa like, yeah yeah it That's was great yeah <laughs> <laughs> kind of i'm like they must have had good insurance that's all i could think of. i know right <laughs> so. i wasn't going to too many raves um and i'm just gonna add uh, that I, I went to one big one that it was, it took place in the landing of the Brooklyn Bridge on the inside of the Brooklyn Bridge on the Brooklyn side. Oh my gosh. And it was kind of built out, but lots of dirt everywhere. Yeah. And it's just like these giant stone brick walls. Like I'm talking two feet by a foot, you know, right size stone bricks with all of these kids walking around on so much ecstasy yes yeah. um and of course the the sound was echoing everywhere it was amazing i went to a few events in there and then of course 9 11 shut all of that down mm -hmm. it was such a an amazing experience and such an odd place to be yeah exactly completely blitzed on drugs <laughs> yeah that's what that's it. <laughs> exactly what i was thinking yeah <laughs> Pretty sure I was on something at the park and was like, I'm not going on a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I don't even remember if they had a liquor license. That was so weird. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. And that uh, was kind of like, you know, I, I didn't get into raves or anything like that, but it was kind of like an experience um, that, you know, you, you try and you're like, okay, yeah. you know, glad we tried it. Definitely different again, out in that like outlier type of culture. Yeah. Definitely um, felt mysterious. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. and when I went to college in Boston I went to um in Cambridge uh whatever goth club was there that I can't remember but it was like the one so mm -hmm. I used to go there too yeah um, it was um, yeah no it's always been kind of a part of of my life you yeah, know yeah. even now as an adult it's like a mellower part which is mm -hmm. funny to think that it's mellower yeah yeah, yeah yeah oh I have a great story so oh yeah yeah, um, yeah. and it's it's tangential it uh, it goes to show your age when you go to stop and shop and they are playing Susie and the Banshees. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like, I feel like they have a microchip on me somewhere, or they recognize mm -hmm. that when I scan the, my card, it's like, Oh, Yvonne's in the house. Like, let's, you know, let's cater to her music. Right. <laughs> right. right. Her, so she'll buy more food, <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, right. 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 Yeah. It's, it's definitely something that's made me feel very awkward. Um, I was in a Dwayne Reed almost 10 years ago now, and they were playing ministry. Oh Lord. Okay. Like the heavy <laughs> not the early ministry. Heavy. I'm like, who is setting up this playlist? Oh yeah. My generation. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Way to make you feel old. Yeah. <laughs> this is not rebellious anymore. I don't, what? No. Oh, come on. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, a lot of um, good memories of yeah. that time, you know, and then, yeah. So after uh, the boardwalk closed and um, I had spent a couple of years at, at college in Boston and I came home for a semester and actually enrolled in uh, Western Connecticut for a semester and, um, right, right. Uh, you know, hanging out with John Bachman, who pretty much he shared an apartment or a floor of a Victorian type of building mm -hmm. off campus there. So that was super convenient to right, crash right. at his place and hang out with them right. and the parties. Um, right, right, right. Yeah. And yeah, and so it kind of evolved. It turned into like a different, um, it went from like this kind of new wave 
thing to like a kind of more melting pot uh, group of people. Cause that's when, you know, like I, um, some names I remember like Jake Palladino who would, you know, I think his band played and um, at WXCI mm -hmm. or at Western State somewhere. And mm -hmm. um, still some of the same carryovers, you know, we've got Andrew Bliss and, and right. uh, her tears, Matt and Brett, and then um, not so much Liz. So there were these kind of parallel groups of people. And then I kind right. of would cross over to different groups and stuff like that. But Right, right. Yeah. And tell me um, about John Bachman. Like, I remember him being the Pierce Maven. Tell, can you talk about him a little bit and what he did? Yeah, he's, but yeah, um, he was fun. He was a fun guy to hang out with and yeah. uh, spent a lot of time at his place. He had a lot of parties with his yeah. roommate, so. And where was, where was his house? Was he in the same house with Jim Callahan? Yes, right. yeah. Okay, yep. okay. Yep. Jim Callahan and I can't remember who else. I don't know if John had uh, Uncle Brian was one of his best friends, and I don't know. I don't think he was really an uncle, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't remember if he lived there yeah. too. I felt like there was two or three guys that lived there at any given time. I know so. Mike Ortiselli lived there for a little bit. Okay. Um, Tom Hulse and Becky Boyce. Mm -hmm. um there were a lot of people who lived there <laughs> yeah yeah it, it was know, amazing that they could keep Live. that place going yeah yeah so yeah it was fun a lot of hanging out there that was kind of a hub because you know a lot of people could just go and be free and you know yeah. do whatever they wanted yeah uh, um do you remember mr kitty yes <laughs> I remember mr kitty now you say that <laughs> Yeah, kitty. I know. I do remember him. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. So. <laughs> um, and then also same with Andrew Bliss and and Brendan Bliss. Spent a lot of time hanging out in their kitchen. You yeah. Know, sitting around the kitchen table, you know, eating food and then listening to music or watching them practice. You know, for the band. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of driving around. I had a van when I was. I had my dad's a plumbing van that was basically right. just an empty shell. It had two front seats and nothing else in the back. Right, right, right. And so we would load up all their equipment and I'd drive, drive them around and, you know, uh, two of them would be sitting on the floor <laughs> or more <laughs> if we had more people going with us, like an entourage, right. Um, right, right, just right. sitting on the floor of the van, driving around. Right, so, right. Fun times. Yeah. I loved her tears. Um, I tried to see them as much as possible, which wasn't that much. Mm -hmm. Um, but I remember the bliss house was this big green Victorian thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Brookfield. Yeah. I mm -hmm. loved that the way it looked and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of good memories hanging out there. And then, um, yeah. I was definitely a her tears groupie for sure. So <laughs> I was going again in my sketchbooks, I was looking through and I have a bunch of set lists. Um, right, right, right. Yeah. Which is fun. And then, oh, uh, cute. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it didn't hurt that they were easy on the eyes. That's for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then another person I just remembered who I loved dearly, who was like my best friend through all this was Nicole Belvedere, which mm -hmm. uh, we somehow or another, she ended up with the nickname Bob. <laughs> so I miss her dearly. I'd love to get in touch with her. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she was, she, she and I did a lot of stuff together and, you know, we were all goth and emo before emo was a thing. Right, right, right. Going around doing stuff. <laughs> a lot of art, photography, you know, we do stuff together. So you still have any of that stuff? I have a little bits. I don't have a lot. Mm -hmm. but I have little bits, Polaroids, you know, like, yeah. I don't know. Any shots in cemeteries? <laughs> yes, I do. Actually. <laughs> I do. I have some shots in cemeteries. I have a shot of me in like a full, beautiful, I wish I still had it, a black velvet dress, like full okay. length and at Yale, like spinning around and, you know, they're kind of, cause their campus is amazing. So oh, yeah. the old buildings. Oh, I remembered another thing too. I saw Jesus and Mary chain at Yale oh, yeah. in a church. Nice. And I remember thinking the, the irony of that is amazing. 
and <laughs> that um, they were so fucked up that they couldn't even sing straight. Like oh, wow. I knew the lyrics better than they did. Right. So it was frustrating, <laughs> but it was, it was still an awesome experience. Right, right, right. So it was an active church, not like the limelight, which was just this. No, it was just a church on the campus of Yale. And I'm sure they used it for other events and things, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like deconsecrated or anything. Like right, that. right, right. <laughs> I think it, was, it wasn't so much like, you know, there were stations of the cross or anything around it, but just right, a, a right. space. Yeah. Um, what brought you to Yale at that time? I, or not, I mean, Sisters of Mercy. No, the band you just saw at Oh Jesus, Mary Chain. Mary Chain, thank you. Yeah, mixing everything up. Um, what else brought you to Yale just to do the photo shoot? Yeah, well, I lived in Newtown, so it wasn't a, a stretch, right, right, like right. a half an hour maybe, um, to go hang out there. It also had a vibe. Um, I forget the name of the club there too. I saw lots of bands at that club. I am terrible with names apparently, I'm but. Yeah, I remember seeing Fishbone at the club once yes. and my friend got his nose broken dancing there. Oh, no. And like, I remember him like snapping it back and I was mortified. Ooh. It was yeah. like the, <laughs> the weirdest <laughs> sound ever. Um, the, yeah, the, I think the scene again, it was kind of like a, a little edgy, a little different. There was a record store there that I used to go to. Um, a lot of these towns that you go to, they had something like a record store yeah. or, you know, that's where you could get your clove cigarettes or you could, you know, right, right. thrift shop or whatever. So yeah, there, they had one, um, Waterbury had a really great record store too, at the base mm -hmm. of like the big tower, uh, building, um, right, right, right. and American trash and Danbury, which you can't right, right, right. like, that was, you know, it was in Brookfield and then it moved to Danbury and that was like yeah. a, a melting pot of, of people as well you yeah, know on yeah. any given day you could go there and see somebody you knew right um, right 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 it was amazing yeah so and I remember like Malcolm having um big bags of vegetables you know like because he was doing he's a like a vegetable only diet and he would have oh, these wow. giant giant sacks of vegetables delivered <laughs> to the store <laughs> and they'd be like hanging out because like that's a lot of carrots in there <laughs> <laughs> that's great he was a vegetarian um in the 80s that was for me that was new mm -hmm. um and i wanted to just link something up with um new haven i don't i think it stopped a while ago but for a long time there was um like a goth festival in the end of the mm -hmm. summer in august um i, don't think I ever knew that started up, started up again i can't remember the name of it and i only went once Okay. Um, but and I don't remember when it started. I think it, it started long after we'd all left. Mm -hmm. um, but talking about scenes that were existent in different areas, mm -hmm. um, at different points in time, there was definitely mm -hmm. a, a strong enough. I, I don't know what attracted people yeah. there for this. It, I guess it just worked easily. Yeah. Yeah. A little, a little festival. And I remember walking through um new haven and just seeing goths everywhere and nobody else yeah right yeah it was a different vibe for sure mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know why new haven but yeah yeah it was a cool scene yeah, yeah. um is there anything else you want to bring up or i will probably email you with all the names that i can't remember right now um <laughs> uh, you know it was a good time for sure. Yes. It was a good time to be alive. There was a lot of self-expression, a lot of people who, you know, um, were influential in, mm -hmm. in, you know, in my growing up and, yeah, yeah. uh, experiences. And I do, I do miss it. Um, and again, that's like why social media is so fantastic. Cause you get to, to reunite with some people and meet new people, you know, yeah. um, even if you were in the same group before and you never knew yeah like us like less yeah exactly <laughs> um i'm trying to keep my cat from going in front of us <laughs> yeah, um, I let my cat out of the room he was eating the door oh dear. <laughs> um yeah i can't think of anything else that is you know i wish i had more memories of images itself i do remember mm -hmm. making a big deal of it driving you know on a uh, friday night or thursday night and going out and god was it tuesdays or fridays i forget mostly fridays fridays yeah right. um 
and yeah, driving out and making it a big deal. I do remember too, actually have another memory. Um, when my grandmother passed away, who I was very, very close with, um, I remember the, the night she passed or no, the night of the services, like I had to go to images. I had to go because it was just, I needed to like release all the emotions and I just knew I had to dance. And I knew my parents thought I was absolutely, they just couldn't wrap their heads around like why I, I yeah. had to go. And like, I ended up just kind of blowing them off and going, I was like, I'm sorry, gotta go, um, you know? Yeah. And it was kind of like medicine for me, you know, just to dance and get it out. And, you know, there is something to be said for like listening to music really loud on a good system. That's and it's so surrounding true. you. <laughs> That's yeah. So true. Yeah. That's great to hear that. Cause I think a lot of, um, what I'm hearing from a lot of people and what I know myself is that going to images really, we're very lucky that we had yeah. images Sorry. and no, that's okay. Hey, <laughs> um, it, we were very lucky to have that in our lives, oh my gosh. no matter yeah. what we were going through at that time. Some of us were really going through a lot of tough shit mm -hmm. and, um, we had a community. I, I never really knew the owners. Um, you know, I obviously knew yeah. that they owned it, but, uh, you know, like in hindsight, like what makes you think like, why, what business model did they think that this was going to be like, you know, profitable, right. um, serving on, you know, underage kids who like dry, right. know, dry establishment, <laughs> you know, every And I week. used to sneak in all the time without paying, you know, I'd, yes. I'd make a fake stamp. And even when yes. it's a black light, I'd get a highlighter. Yeah, that around. Um, I yeah. have a I have an answer to that sort of. I really want to interview them, but Brian Tracer mentioned that they opened it because um, one of them, um, their brother, had died in a drunk driving accident of sorts, oh. and so he wanted oh. to create a place for teens to to be safe. So, yeah, yeah, to be safe, yeah. and I mean, let it out creatively, but yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's fantastic. I had no idea. Yeah. I didn't I know no either, idea. but Brian Tracer told me and that's in his interview, which I'll be publishing yeah. soon. Oh, well, that's heartwarming. I'm glad. And I, I am so glad that it existed. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It was like, um, looking in a mirror, you know, you go there and you're like, oh, there's a whole bunch of other people like me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, cool. Yeah. Especially cause you know, we're coming from all different schools and mm -hmm can be isolating sometimes yeah. when you're growing up so exactly exactly oh so I met my first college roommate Rick Solomon there and he's from oh. Danbury okay so yeah we ended up we knew each other at images first and we both went to uh, mass art in Boston mm -hmm. and um oh. Massachusetts College of Art and uh mm -hmm. we decided that we didn't want to do dorms we were just going to rent an apartment together so we right, rented right. one bedroom and we drew straws and he got the bedroom and I got the living room okay <laughs> It was fun though. We had a great time. That's great. Good memories. Cool. So yeah. 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 That's a small world. It's a very small world. Um, but we keep going back to the to our roots, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I am proud to say that my son is also an independent thinker. He's not so much into music. It's not his jam. He's yeah. very into history. Okay. But um but old he's, is he? very, he's uh, just turned 14. Okay. Right? So yeah, he's very independent. Um, you know, we're not, we're atheists in this house and he is totally yeah. fine with that. Not that we ever pushed it on him. Um, yeah, because, yeah, yeah. yeah. My husband's upbringing is, is Catholic and, uh, but it, it's, it makes me proud to think that he's, you know, independent, but a smart mm -hmm. thinker and, and, you know, well-liked in school. So, mm -hmm. um, and like I said, this day and age, there aren't clicks like that. It's, I mean, there probably will always be something like that, but it's not yeah. as, it's not as divisive as yeah. it used to be. It's interesting how it was like that back then. I know. Right now. I know. I know. Yeah. So. But hopefully, you know, we're moving forward in this world. Yay. I hope. <laughs> Yeah, on that somber note, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll um, try to find. I I posted um. I did find a, a press pass from WXCI, which I'm sure I got from John Bachman. Yeah. And where I thought I could use it, I have no idea because it's like, <laughs> who's gonna let some press person from XCI come in and do an interview <laughs> or something like that? 
but I know I got it for like as a pass to do something right and right, I never right. used it but it, I found that in my sketchbook so I posted that on the um our Facebook group the yeah. memories and images yeah, and yeah I'll post some more stuff as I go you know and find yeah. things so please do please do yeah yeah some of them are you know the, I don't like there was a note to for something like a party somewhere mm. but I can't even understand my chicken scratch but uh <laughs> it's like well that was so important apparently <laughs> like the date and time and place to go to a party. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. fun. Yeah, 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 very fun. I am thankful that I kept sketchbooks because a lot of this would be just mm. out of my mind and like out of my memory altogether, but you know once you read it you're like, "Oh yeah, I kind of remember that," you know. So <laughs> I should probably keep doing it even though it's been a long time since I've kept them up. They're journals mostly, yeah. but sketchbooks as well, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah oh, cool. that's all good. right yeah I hope, I hope i answered all your questions i don't know you did and it was just you know they're meant to help you remember stuff mm -hmm. um and it sounds like you did and as you remember more stuff please let me know yeah um, so my roommate in new milford um along with dave nelson was caroline right. schmidt okay Do you remember caroline i don't know from she's from new milford yes um, um and she married a uh -huh. jason who i can't remember his last name her maiden name uh schmidt it was caroline schmidt hmm. okay maybe i don't remember yeah <laughs> um but she yeah we would go yes i do remember her mm -hmm. the boardwalk together yeah so she lived with us for a little while mm -hmm. um and yeah john callahan i dated mm -hmm. um Rick Solomon and then Rob Rea. I met at Images. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't remember everybody, but yeah, there was a lot. There was there was a lot of us. Yeah. Um, and where did you live in New Milford again? Or right off the green, like there was a little side okay. street, and we lived in like a little house that was split into upstairs, downstairs apartments. And right, right. Yeah, cool. it was actually funny too. I remember one time. Um, my friend Lawson was staying over. It was a snowstorm mm -hmm. and it, there was a sound of like a crash. And he goes, that sounded like a garbage truck. And we looked out the window and a snowplow hit his car. Oh no. <laughs> it was like total his, his Jeep at the time. I was like, oh my God, just awful luck. But, oh, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, and another memory kind of all over the place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, You're going to have to edit this. So it makes some sort of sense. Um, <laughs> I was into, I got turned on to, um, Genesis Peorge, uh, Psychic TV. I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember them. Yeah, we're, them. we're going to see an exhibition tomorrow. Really? With Genesis. Well, wow. Rest okay. Peace. Um, yeah. yeah. There's an exhibition at Pioneer Works, Pioneer Works in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Oh, get um, out. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. So it's up for a couple more weeks. We did a, we drove up to Boston. We saw them at mass art before I even knew yes. I was going to mass art and, um, saw him and like, you know, like his whole ritual performance and things oh, and nice. hanging from his nipples and stuff like that. And, um, <laughs> wow, that opened my eyes, but the, uh, yeah. So like Andrew bliss, I think turned me on to them. And, um, but I remember that being like an overnight, like a trip like we drove all the way out there saw them and then we drove all the way back and i thought right, that was right. bananas back then you know <laughs> so again the energy level oh i'd right. love to have that still i know so. right 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 yeah. um yeah i'm sorry i missed that back then oh and the swans i saw the swans with andrew and i think john maybe some other people um in the city in the village and i remember iggy pop standing outside like wearing a like a muppet fur coat type of thing with no shirt on underneath. Of course not. like just hanging out outside you know before the show <laughs> was that at cbs cbgb's no it wasn't okay. it was i never did get okay. to go to cbgb's i would have okay. loved to but yeah i saw um some version of the swans it was some kind of acoustic something or other at cbgb's in the oh. 90s uh, yeah I would have loved to go to CBGB's. I, I never did. I don't know why. I just, maybe it wasn't like nobody wanted to go or there was no band that I wanted, you know, whatever the case. Right, 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 right. right. So, yeah. That. What's the cat's name? This is Rosie. And then I have a Hudson and my dog is Rocket. <laughs> so, yeah. 
the girls there, uh, the cats are girls and they were rescued from our neighbor. He was mowing his lawn and he saw the, like the shrubbery moving and he discovered these two little kittens. And so we rescued them and set up a place outside for the mom to come and come back and she mm. kind of never did. So we right. had to bottle feed them. I mean, they were babies, oh, wow. like little, little babies right, right, and, right. um, teach them, you know, how to clean themselves. And it was weird. It was a weird, like, <laughs> like feed them like every two hours, like babies. Right. And you had to burp them yeah. and stuff. It was, it oh, was wow. something. but yeah, no, Rosie's a good girl. She's, but she can be an, an asshole. Like she just likes to knock shit off of the tables all the time. So. <laughs> It's nice seeing her tail pop in on both sides. Oh, I know. She's she's furry. I'm going to get all furry. <laughs> I'll let you see her. Hey, Rose. Hey, Rose. Nope, not yeah. the camera. <laughs> yeah, she's a split face torty. Nice. With nails, and now I'm covered in fur. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> eh, what are you going to do? Cool. So, well, thanks. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm so I really, excited. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with this. I wish um sure. I wish I had more like images specific information. Um, images is the catalyst. Um mm -hmm. it's really, you know, I'm hopefully hopefully gonna be interviewing uh, Morgan Williams, who was a DJ at WXCI. I don't I don't okay. know if he ever went to images. Yeah. So it's really all about the community that we had. Um, Malcolm Tent, I don't know if he ever went to Images. He was right. not of that age group. Um, right. I'd love to interview him. But he um, was, he was a, a, like his store was a major yeah. hub of all this activity as well. So yeah. it, it definitely is a web that yeah. is all, you know, interconnected. So yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's oh. fantastic. I'm really glad that you're doing this. And, yeah. you know, Thank I you. feel like, you know, yeah. even though I'm not into the, own tool for that scene but I do you know and even now though like I do I'm still kind of on the outskirts you know I'm not a typical mm -hmm. parent like I go break into abandoned buildings and take photos and yeah. um you know there's things that I do that are not typical yeah, uh, yeah. still it's just in a different outlet oh, typical yeah <laughs> I'm, typical. So. I'm definitely not a typical mom that's for sure <laughs> thank you yeah Thank you for carrying that. Um, yeah. If I was a parent, I would not be a typical parent at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. I love it. I love it. So anyway. All right. All right. Thank Have you. Have a great weekend. Thank um, you. And if I find stuff, do you want me to just send it to you? Yeah. Or, okay. That would be great. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. I started taking some pictures of some excerpts in my sketchbook where I mentioned stuff. Um, like I said, I have the her tier set list. I can, you know, okay. share. Um, yeah, I have yeah, cassettes, yeah. I have cassettes, like mixtapes here, um, <laughs> that, uh, actually Rob Rea was gracious enough to digitize for oh, me. Nice. So, um, I have, you know, I still have the cassettes, but I also, and yeah. the sound quality is awful. I know. Right. <laughs> but, you know, I have the, at least I have the set list. So like, I can actually go through and, um, you know, recreate it and whatever. Right, right, right. I dropped Spotify, but like, you know, yeah, YouTube music or whatever. So even a photograph of the cassettes and the holder, even if there's no decoration yeah. on them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, oh. you know, the art, the art person yeah. in me was like, yeah, it can't just be a <laughs> list of songs. It has to be artsy. Right, right. So right, right, right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'd love that. Please send them okay. my way. And yeah, it'd be my pleasure. Yeah. It's cool. fun. Fun to share that stuff. And I think another thing it, that I would love to see out of this is, um, so when my parents divorced, uh, my mother got all the stuff, including the photos mm. and they all got ruined in my grandparents' barn. It collapsed and oh, rain no. and stuff. Okay. So like to see photos, even, I mean, it sounds selfish, but of myself would be yeah. really cool. Cause like, I just don't have them yeah. uh, a lot. I have some things stuck in my sketchbooks, but that's about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it would be great to see more photos of that time. Yeah. You know, that time. It and I, cool. I know there are photos that, um, there's a Sabra Pegler who I don't know very well. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. She's the one who posted that video Oh on, yeah. on Facebook and then Rob Rea reposted. Yeah. Um, she, I, there's something about the owner, um, of images, John, has a bunch of photographs that he was going to send to 
to Sabra. So I want to get in touch with them oh. and see how that's going. Cause I yes. know Liz asking them to like post them, post them. Yes. So, and in the face, yeah. the Facebook group is great, but all the images are spread out. Mm-hmm. So um, I'd love to compile them in some way and like make a link to it or something as opposed to them being spread out over time and in Facebook obscures things when they get right. really old. Um, the other thing that I'm concerned about as a digital archivist is that a lot of these, like the images of these things, like the physical things still exist mm-hmm. and everyone still has them, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, as you digitize them, if you digitize them at a, at a certain low resolution, they don't mm-hmm. last very long mm-hmm. um, because digital, like you're a memory worker, you're a librarian. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you're aware of a lot of this, but um, yeah, the higher the res, the, the better. Um, right. The more longevity. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I know. Blah, blah, blah. But it'd be great to just see them. Too. Yes. So, yes. Exactly. You know, maybe, maybe this goes, ends up on a website or, you know, becomes an archive in its own right yeah. in that way that people can see. So yeah, I want be really cool. Yeah. All right, mm-hmm. my dear. All right. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Been a great, really it's great been, talks. This has been really great. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. good. I'm glad. And, and yeah, I can't wait to see what you do and, and hear more and, um, yeah, I'll keep you in mind if there's other stuff that comes up and uh, other people, you yeah, know. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>